Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much for um, joining this uh, webinar and the masterclass today. My name is Bhavani. Uh, I'm the founder and senior partner at Sales Edge. Uh, and right before we deep dive uh, into the subject, uh, a huge thank you to Zozo Ray for backing this up uh, on this important subject. Uh, for all of us who don't know what Zozo Ray is, um, Zozo Ray is one of the fastest and best regarded uh, SaaS product companies. Uh, when it comes to employee engagement and aligning salespeople to their targets, digitizing incentives, and providing error-free payouts uh, every single time. Uh, please meet uh, our coaches, our panelists today. We have Kalpana Ajayan, who is the group head of uh, customer experience at Ilvis, uh, and Rachit Mehra, who is the senior vice president uh, at Coachatech. Uh, between these two, they have uh, about 35 years of uh, experience in designing, delivering, and transforming customer experience uh, for every organization that they have worked with. Uh, I always say that uh, there is an art, heart, and a science uh, to designing successful CX strategies. And I hope uh, our coaches today would be able to give you a step-by-step -step guide towards building your own customer experience playbook. Uh, I will encourage everyone to send in your questions on the chat here. Uh, I would ask these questions on your behalf. Uh, please don't forget uh, to mention your name, your organization, so I can mention it. Uh, and on that note, Kalpana, uh, I would invite you to open this discussion today. Um, I will ask you some questions as we move forward. Uh, and as I get these questions, I will throw into them. Uh, I'm personally very excited to learn about your secret sauce uh, uh, to successful customer experience transformation. So uh, Kalpana, over to you. Thank you, Bhavani. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Wonderful to be here. Um, I hope it's a, it's a value enriching session. I hope to learn as much as I hope to share uh, today with my years of experience in, uh, you know, in, in sales, service, HR. And I, and I think uh, that uh, probably gives me um, a, 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 a vision or a site which uh, you know is an all in, all encompassing when it comes to customer experience because I think all of these elements play out when it comes to designing uh, uh, you know customer experience. Um, of course, we begin the presentation with uh, uh, with a uh, well. Uh, I think you some of you may have seen this visual of, of you know how do you zag when everybody zigs right? This is a very famous visual. Um, this is by, uh, of course, uh, a legendary concept by uh, uh, a, a famous marketer, Monty Nunez. And, and my point in, in putting this visual here is truly to say that can customer experience actually be the differentiator for our products and services? You know, when there is so much of, you know, um, you know sameness uh, when it comes to products and services, and it, takes, it does not take too long for people to replicate our products and services, can customer experience be that differentiator for our organizations, for our customers? Of course, um, I, um, uh, you know, um, um, this is Socrates, uh, in case you haven't guessed. Uh, I think the questions are a dead giveaway. Uh, his entire methodology, uh, you know, of, of reaching um, uh, uh, philosophical depths was by actually asking questions. So I think it's very important when we are in the field uh, and, and all of us are in the field of customer experience, right? Be it sales, be it marketing, be it frontline, be it uh, service guys at the back or be it the CEOs of the organization. All of us are in the business of customer experience. I'm sure you all agree. Um, and truly, if we have to be uh, make customer experience the differentiator, I think it begins by challenging the status quo and asking, okay, but why? Right? I mean, why do we accept? Why do we have to accept the status quo? I think that's a very important attitude to have when we are dealing with customer experience. Um, of course, I uh, go to this slide, and to me, it's a very important slide because uh, to me, this captures what India is all about. Gone are the days when India was the stepchild, um, you know, where everything came to us after 10 years, after five years, when it was introduced, including movies. I can imagine, I, I remember the frustration when movies used to be released like six months in advance uh, in the US and we used to get it much later. All of that is gone. Now it's, it's a level playing field. Uh, a customer of India is as demanding and as uh, knowledgeable and as exposed as every customer around the world. So, you know, it's a level playing field. So we can't get away with, you know, and I think it's, a, it, it's a very important uh, truth, right? That 
uh, we can't get away with substandard service. It's very, very important to deliver the best. Uh, and of course, our country right now is a, is a very young country. 65% of our population, as we know, uh, you know, is less than 35. And therefore, as with youth, they don't have patience for talkers. They want doers. So as with, uh, as with everything else, uh, their demands of, uh, uh, from, from their politicians, their demands from their uh, icons, their demands from their heroes, the demands from the brands that they that they experience on an everyday on an everyday basis is to be a doer, not just to be you know talking about I'm going to be the best in customer service, but actually deliver. That's the expectation of India today. And uh, of course, uh, you know, category first no longer works as expectations are clearly cross category. Uh, you know, I've been a BFSI professional for the last 20 plus years, and the predominant uh, part of my career uh, was spent in the life insurance uh, business. I can tell you that uh, for as boring or as, uh, you know, as, uh, um, you know, uh, sterile uh, uh, business as life insurance, the customer's expectations now of even, say, things like policy delivery is an Amazon-like experience. It's not that he wants the policy to be delivered in two days. No, don't get me wrong there. But he definitely wants to be informed on an everyday basis on what's happening to his policy document because all that he gets out of paying millions of rupees is a piece of paper with the promise that it will get delivered when the, when the time comes 10 years, 20 years uh, uh, later. So the expectation right now is completely cross-category. He doesn't care. Uh, you know, that you're a life insurance company and, you know, I will only send you information once in 10 days. No, not at all. He expects an Amazon-like experience. And of course, uh, thanks to technology now, there is a complete, uh, you know, uh, the, the vanishing line between rural and, uh, and uh, urban. Earlier, you could treat your customers differently. No longer so. And a rural customer uh, or, a, or a tier two, tier three customer is as demanding, uh, you know, as any of our uh, urban customers. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, you know, in today's world, uh, you know, um, it's very, very uh, in, in, in a COVID filled world, right, where, um, uh, you know, where people are actually quite disappointed by how their brands that their favorite brands and their companies have treated them. There's a lot of disappointment because, uh, you know, they're not hearing anything from the company because the companies have gone into, uh, you know, into their own shells, uh, trying to figure out what we need to do. And so therefore, communicate, communicate, communicate. There is no such thing as over communication. You know, uh, how uh, one of the most important lessons that I learned, um, I don't know how many people have experienced the 2008 financial crisis in this, uh, in this group, but I was front and center in it in a multinational bank. And I can tell you that nobody had any answers, right? The, the market was tanking. Uh, nobody had answers. We didn't know how low, how low was low. Um, and so the most... Um, uh, the most, uh, uh, you know, intuitive reaction by the relationship managers who manage our customers is not to contact the customer simply because I don't have the answer, right? What, what would I tell them? If the customer were to ask me, what, what am I going to tell him, right? And one of the most important aspects as business leaders, we had to keep pushing our front line to say, it doesn't matter that you don't have the answer, but be there for the customer, right? Tell him, sir, we don't know. We are also in the same boat. But the minute we know something, we will be, in, you know, we are constantly in touch with you and we will take the right action for you. So a lot of times we confuse uh, the expectations of the customer. We think customers uh, expect, uh, uh, you know, us to know all the answers and provide all the answers. Not really. A lot of times customers, uh, you know, actually just want to be heard, want to be told, want to be reassured that we are there, that we are around, right? So... Uh, there is, especially it's relevant in today's uh, unprecedented times. I know unprecedented is the most abused word right now, but the fact of the matter is it is unprecedented times. And so even more the reason for us to be in touch with our customers. Uh, of course, uh, I, 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 I move on to the uh, next slide uh, because I, I do understand that uh, we do have a, a mix of B2B and B2C customers, but at the end of it, you know, they're all customers, they're all people. That, and they are and, and, and emotions to me, you'll see the thread in my in my presentation. I'm unafraid to say that emotions and, and how to engineer emotions, uh, you know, is, is the most important when it comes to uh, customer experience. We should not shy away, uh, you know, from uh, a lot of corporates tend to shy away saying, you know, emotion is not something that I want to deal with in the corporate world. But the fact of the matter is we're dealing with humans. 
Uh, and so therefore, it doesn't matter who your customers are. At the end of it, they are flesh and blood and go through emotion. Um, right. I, of course... Uh, uh, help now, before... Um, can, I, can I just ask something here? Of um, course. Thank you. Um, a lot of people, including me, uh, we often equate uh, customer service and customer experience as one of the same things. Um, I mean, are these the same things? Uh, is there a difference between customer service? Is there a blurring line? Uh, how do I, if I'm a practicing customer experience executive, uh, how do I see the difference and uh, what do I do to move away from, to, to raise the bar right from just servicing the customer to giving a brilliant experience? What uh, is the good question, good question, Bhavani. Um, you know, and, and I think this, this slide actually just pretty much talks and gives you the answer. Because what is a not customer experience, uh, you know, is something that I've attempted to answer. It is not, it is not, it's not one department that takes care of customer experience. And it definitely, uh, I see this in many organizations, Bhavani, as rightly pointed out by you, that that gets subsumed under customer service. So customer experience is one part of customer service and gets treated as uh, you know, uh, one section of customer service. Uh, it's not just customer service. It's much more than that. Um, so, you know, um, it's what is customer experience? And I think Rachit has a good slide on it, which is going to come later. Uh, but, you know, what really is customer experience is how the customer experiences the brand, right? Through the various touch points that are available to him. So who is responsible for customer experience? It is, of course, the customer service person whom you're dealing with on the phone or through email. Of course, that is a very integral part of it. But even before his interaction over a phone or, a, a, you know, or, a, or, a, or an email begins, he is actually experiencing it through the, how the brand is portrayed. Is it a caring brand? The journey actually begins even when, before he becomes a customer when he's still a prospect. Right? right, how he experiences the brand. It's, it's a very then, holistic experience what you're talking about. Like that's right. even that's before right. I start inter my interaction with you as a brand, as a customer. Um, I have some perception I, I, about I, you, yes. Yeah. And all right, great, thank you. Yeah, so it's not just so, therefore when our salespeople interact with our, with our customers, he or she is actually uh, providing, uh, is, is making the customer experience the brand by the way I conduct myself, right? Uh, you know, so all of this is customer experience. It is not just customer service. All of us are responsible for customer experience because all of us are responsible for how the customer experiences the holistic brand and the uh, uh, product. Uh, so therefore, uh, you know, um, how do we, uh, you know, how can the customer, how can we impact the customer uh, experience? Um, you know, uh, again, in continuation of what Pavani just asked and I was uh, sharing my views on it. The way I have gone about defining customer experience in my uh, group, in my organization is that uh, there are three important pillars which are responsible for customer experience. Of course, our end customers, but equally important are the two uh, other pillars, which is the inter intermediary pillar and the employee pillar. Intermediary pillar, of course, is much more relevant when we have a business which is highly intermediated like that of uh, life insurance, et cetera, because the way the customer experiences uh, the, uh, the, the company is through the agent that is servicing the customer, you know, the way he or she interacts. He, or, he probably would never see ever an employee of, of, of the parent company. For him, the epitome or the essence of the brand is the interaction of the individual in front of him, which is the intermediary. Equally important, of course, is the employee. So in, if it is not intermediated in a B2B kind of a scenario where the actual employee is interacting with the customer, the customer again experiences uh, the brand through the employee. Now, we cannot hope to deliver a great customer experience if I have dissatisfied intermediaries or I have dissatisfied employees. If I'm going to make it very, very difficult for my intermediaries to do what is expected of him to service you, uh, or my employee to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make it so difficult, if there is so much of friction in delivering the service, then you can imagine how the employee or the intermediary is going to actually react with the end customer, because he's going to carry all of it. He can't just, you know, put on this mask, right? So it is equally important that we take care of our intermediaries and our employees in order to deliver a great uh, uh, customer uh, experience. That is the way I would define, uh, you know, the three pillars of customer experience. 
Moving on to the next slide, therefore, I'm going on to the first pillar, which is customer. And here I want to, uh, you know, uh, share an, uh, you know, uh, an, uh, an anecdote. It really happened in, a, in, a, in an international airport. Uh, the airport authorities noticed that there was a lot of queuing, um, you know, in the security area, right? Um, we've all been through that. Anybody who's done international traveling, first of all, it's like the ridiculous times of the day. So you're at three o'clock in the morning, you've got kids in hand, you've got luggage in hand, and you know, it's all of that irritation. And you are trying to stand in the queue in the international airport in the, and, and, and you know, during the uh, you know, security check. So the airport authority said they were going to do something fantastic for, the, uh, you know, for solving the customer issue. And what they did was to actually spend millions of dollars in a QMS, in a queue management uh, you know, system, uh, in order to ensure that the experience for the customer uh, was better. Somebody in the management had the bright idea to say, you know, well, this is your solution, but can we go back and ask the customer what actually is he expecting from this, right? You know, from a, you know, how, how does he think this experience could be made better? You know what the answer was? The answer was actually, we are okay to wait for time because this is for our own safety and security. But can you ensure that you provide us chairs? Because we have children, we have bags, you're not able to stand for a long time. So what could be solved by $10 airport chairs? You know, uh, you know, the management went into an overdrive into spending millions of dollars in QMS. So what is my point here? My point is listen to your customers. They have the solution most of the time. Do not assume that, you know, it's a very, and this is, and this is a running theme and I, anybody who's worked with me will say this inside out thinking versus outside in thinking. We think we know the answer to the solution, but a lot of times the solutions are actually with the customer. All we need to do is to make the effort to listen to the customer and understand what he actually wants. It's very, very important because if you are catering to something else, then how, how, how can we hope to improve the customer experience, right? So listen to your customers uh, continuously. Second source of information, your front line. Uh, I used to run a call center which had close to about 1,000 odd people uh, in, a, in a previous multinational organization, right? The kind of insights, I would make my product managers come and listen on the floor, right? Because the insights that my call center agents had for a product or a process improvement was tremendously insightful. Why? Because they are talking to 30, 40 of these guys every single day, right? And so, you know, the uh, very, very rich source of uh, uh, information. So one of the practices that I've instituted in my organization is that my entire Exco listens to calls at least once a month. Two customer calls a month, make them listen to the call. Why is it important? A lot of times the, the senior management gets quite cut off from the rest of the organization. Great way to keep them grounded. Listen to what is the practical aspect of, you know, uh, what is my agent feeling? What is my agent going through? More importantly, what is my customer going through, right? I would urge you to have this customer call listening practice uh, in your organization. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you have methods of, you know, listening to the uh, customer, uh, et cetera. But most important is to be humble and, 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 and assume you don't have all the answers. Listening to your customers, listening to your frontline, uh, you know, makes you very humble and makes you, uh, e the kind of insights that come from your frontline is truly amazing, right? Kalpana, uh, this is an interesting question um, from Tarun. Um, Tarun says uh, that in these desperate times, the business leaders are focused towards keeping the business as usual with minimum inputs and regular outputs. Uh, or rather still putting bets trying to increase the NPS. So uh, it would be great. I don't want to alarm you here, uh, but we are at 11.19. Uh, and, uh, but, but it would be great if you can take this question. And uh, Rajit, uh, since this is something that uh, falls right into your slot as well, I'll uh, ask you to answer this question when we come to your part. Sure. But that would be great if you can take it. Sure. So I'll just continue with my presentation, therefore. So there is a methodology in which we, uh, it's a great question, by the way, and I'm waiting for Rachit to answer as well. But it's very important to, uh, you know, first step of customer experience, anybody who's done customer experience will know, do the journey mapping, understand, identify the most impactful points. Again, don't do an inside out, but do an outside in, uh, right? A lot of times the most impactful points are not what you think it is. It's actually when you listen to the customer, when you see, 
the data, a lot of times the data is actually screaming. Uh, you, when you find questions and, and a lot of queries and requests coming from a particular area, you know that that is an impactful touch point. So ensure that you have uh, NPS, uh, you know, be it digital, uh, or which is transactional, or it could be a relational NPS, ensure that you identify the touch points and ask the right questions to the customer. But let me tell you, the gold mine is actually in the verbatims. Let the customer speak. Give him an opportunity to provide the verbatims. Gold mine. You need to mine that gold because a lot of suggestions actually come from there. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, one of my favorite slides and to the heart of, you know, um, how do we, you know, Indians, we are an emotional lot. Look at the way we celebrate our weddings. Look at the way we celebrate our birthdays. Look at the way we celebrate anything, right? We are emotional. So how do we as, um, uh, as Indians, uh, you know, engineer the customer experience throughout the journey with the brand? And what do I mean by that? Uh, you know, empathy, most important, crucial. A lot of times your call center agent may not have the solution or the solution may still be WIP. But how do I deal with the customer? That's equally important, the soft skill, empathy. Second, reassurance. Now, this is such an important one and it's a cultural component, really. Uh, how do we empower the frontline? You know, how do we empower the frontline to say that, you know, um, uh, I have the ownership of the client. I'm going to ensure that there is going to be a solution. It's a cultural, it's a cultural uh, tuning of your frontline, giving, taking the responsibility. Third one, delight. Again, empowerment. Uh, you know, what is it that the frontline can do to solve the problem as an intermediate, as a stopgap while the problem is getting addressed, the larger issue uh, uh, can get uh, uh, addressed. And of course, love, which is a long-term relationship. Very, very crucial. When we have promoters, what is it that I can do? Can I do a differentiated service? Can I ensure that I... Uh, um, you know, I have them in my books for a longer period of time so that there are opportunities for cross sell, upsell. We know all the business metrics, guys, right? The second pillar is, of course, the intermediaries. Again, no different from employees. Ensure they recognize their importance, valuable source of information, understand the touchful, uh, uh, impactful touch points. Ensure that you are part of the journey, you're listening on the journey. If they have a, something called an agent portal or portal through which they are able to uh, you know, access uh, information, ensure that it is as friction free as possible. So listen to the data. What is the data saying? Are most queries around commission, most queries around status of delivery, ensure that that is available to him, that he or she does not need to call in and, and, and or, call, or check with your sales guys to figure out what's going to happen. So equally important to listen to your intermediaries and solve their problems so that they in turn can provide a better experience for the customer. Of course, the third most important pillar is your employee. Uh, there's enough and more data to tell us that customers will abandon the brand if the employees are not knowledgeable. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, there's enough and more uh, uh, data around uh, this. Uh, uh, so the, uh, if the, the thing that I would ask uh, here, uh, I would uh, urge you to consider is that only two out of 10, so I say, suppose you're recruiting, only two out of 10 get selected, but there are eight people that are actually the brand ambassadors. Now they'd go about, if they've had a bad experience, you make them wait for an interview for 25 minutes before they were called in for an interview. Be very sure. They are going to complain on glass doors or social media or whatever it is. All of them are opportunities for you to, uh, you know, uh, as far as, uh, and they could be future customers as well, or maybe they are your customers already. So ensure that you are able to capture the feedback of your employees at the relevant stages. Uh, you know, and it could be at the time of onboarding. It's very stunning to see the NPS, the ENPS uh, from day seven to day 90. Just 30, just the three months make a difference in the, the ENPS changing. Uh, you know, I, I would have urge you loaded, to... I have, a, I, have a, I have a loaded question for you here. So um, <clears throat> it is no secret uh, a happy employee makes the customer happy, right? Um, and, and, and the funny thing is in business is that most of the times we know the what of it. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to learn that, you know, in, in your work at Eagleweeds as the group head of customer experience, how have you ensured that a strong employee experience, a strong employee culture, which is focused towards the employee, has been put into place? Were there, were there any um, specific things that you did in your experience here or in the past or something that you have seen? that uh, we as leaders or practitioners can build a strong culture because I see uh, a strong correlation and uh, the graph here that you put it uh, really proves that point. But uh, have, you, have you seen in your experience that uh, it's it really been happening? And, and if yes, 
how have you done it personally so actually my next couple of slides answer that question ah, you know perfect. it's about the culture right but the most important thing is that you know culture is is something that is driven top down so it is very crucial that your 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 ceo or the senior management is actually uh, you know uh, believes this if we do not have the ceo uh, you know uh, uh, buy in things like culture around customer experience cannot be driven in any organization however senior you may be it's got to be owned by the ceo You're most right. important you have to make him a stakeholder second nothing speaks like data bamani so you know uh, the first few months uh, of my job all i did was to go around talking with my employees talking to my i, I traveled around the country meeting my intermediaries meeting my employees and 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 actually doing mystery shopping and and showed them you know this is what our our customers are this is what our employees are saying this is what our uh, you know our intermediaries are saying when it comes to customer experience there is a wealth then i would urge you to do small experiments if you want to convince in your management take small steps but take steps which are powerful but small demonstrate the uh, you know uh, the 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 effectiveness of it that's when you have the buy in right so uh, a very simple one i did claims calling on 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 six of my competition and myself and i actually played the call and claims in insurance business is the most important you know moment of truth right as you can imagine right you should see the varied experience and then it drives home nothing speaks like facts when you have actually spoken to customers and you represent them in the organization you are the voice of the customer and you the more you will get the respect when you actually back it up with a lot more customer interaction i mean i hope that answers your question uh, bhavani yeah uh, so therefore uh in terms of creating a culture you have to start with a vision and a mission statement and as i said you need to get your ceo involved in it what is the long term vision customer experience is not something that happens uh, you know for the cx team it's the whole organization's vision how do you enmesh it with the overall vision of the organization now that's a three year journey let me tell you any culture building is a three year journey you start with the vision you start on you know how do you actually go about baselining what where are you at where do you want to be right that's a very important exercise uh, uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, to adopt and then of course uh, to have a common one one measure for the whole organization it could be nps it could be anything whatever that is that you know have one one number everybody focused on that one number have a target have a vision then drive everybody's kra not just your sales and service everybody's kra even the ops guys say kra but that's still two or three years away but that's how you actually oh, build how, an how do you even do that how do you drive a sales ops kra that's an interesting point right so you have to figure and, out and what, what is you link it to actually so the sales kra can be driven by the intermediary nps very simple bhavani you tell them that if your intermediaries are not happy guys how do you ensure how can we ensure that there is a great customer experience right if it is a digital and no intermediary have you know customer experience along the digital journey become their kra ops right if you have uh, uh, on 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 specific touch points if you are capturing feedback link it back to the ops ops team that is actually has the uh, responsibility for it and say kra here sucks or kra here is fantastic medical experience in in insurance is one of the most challenging experiences right it's a very small population but it's a very vocal population so you know you can build in it you just have to be uh, clear so therefore journey mapping becomes very very crucial accountability create accountability for each of those functions uh, then automatically uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, you know the uh, kra is then become a matter of so we started off with the ops and service kra we have now gotten into the sales kra i'm going to get into the back office kra so right but it's a journey it shouldn't be in a hurry uh, because you know all of them need to believe in that this is this is something that actually affects my work right i'm going to just go through uh, this is this is the last slide uh, which i want to spend time on which is that very important that customer experience is not is not you know a side activity it has to be front and center to the overall overall goals of the company the question that you asked bhavani which is in today's covid times when bottom line is affected when cost pressure is phenomenal your your customer experience insights need to lead to projects you know bain calls it the inner loop and the outer loop when mm -hmm. we hear from customers you go about solving the customer problems right away individual customer problems that's the inner loop 
But the right. larger outer loop is where, where you're able to impact and effect larger business transformational projects. Now, these projects will automatically result in two things, gain revenue and reduce cost. Take cost reduction projects right at the beginning. Easy to get conviction within the organization. In my case, we did the project on communication. Easy, right? We realized that most of the problems were not because of, uh, you know, a customer not receiving, but because he didn't know what was going to happen. So we actually revamped 600 pieces of communication. That resulted in two things. That resulted in better communication and it also right. resulted in reduction in costs. So your projects cannot be a luxury for the organization. It has to actually impact the top line and the bottom line, right? So be very focused on it. Have, uh, uh, have updates with your uh, exco, with your senior management. Ensure there are platforms in which you can showcase. This is how you build a conviction within your organization for customer experience. And of course, I've already uh, talked about this outside in versus inside out. Natural way, when we do process mapping, always we are looking at tax. It doesn't matter to the customer. Tax are of course crucial, but look at what is more important from the customer. So always be the voice of the customer when, when, when process mapping or changes or transformation that is happening, you have to be the voice of the customer. Constantly sharing the insights. Uh, you know, from what you have learned, what you have heard, so that it's an outside in uh, 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 way to uh, facilitate uh, the changes. That's about it, Bhavani. So therefore, innovation must truly address customer needs and solve the problems uh, which the customers are looking to have solved. So it's very important to understand what is the problem of the customer and truly have innovative ways in which we can actually look at solving the customer problems. I'm sorry, I, I, I hope I didn't... Uh, uh, spill over, uh, but thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kalpana. This was really insightful. Uh, and uh, one thing that I missed mentioning in the beginning, uh, we would be sharing this uh, presentation with all the participants who come on the call today. Uh, so, uh, and in case you have any questions, you can always write back to us on specific points that, that may occur to you at a later time as well. Uh, I can answer these questions or I can ask one of our panelists to take it up at a later time as well. Uh, so thank you so much, Kalpana. Thank you so much. Uh, Rachit, uh, uh, there you go. But before you begin, uh, I noticed a very uh, interesting question, um, you know, that was sent to me from uh, Catherine. Uh, so Catherine is asking, uh, how do you encourage clients to avail self-service digital channels, uh, especially with traditional clients who are who like to deal directly with an agent or a branch person. Uh, and, and I know that nobody knows this better than you. You have been in these situations hundreds of times. You are using technology and a lot, a bigger part of your presentation today covers this aspect as well. Uh, so I think uh, you'll be the best person to answer this. Uh, I'm gonna throw it at you. Uh, please feel free to answer it at a time when you can. Uh, and uh, Rachit, you can, uh, Kalpana, if you can stop sharing your screen, yes, thank you. Uh, Rachit, you can share your screen. So, uh, thanks, uh, Bhavani, and uh, thank you so much, Kalpana. Uh, you have really touched upon some very interesting and relevant points, uh, and I personally resonate most of them. Being in this uh, side of business of managing customer experience. And uh, Bhavani, we will be touching uh, the question which you have asked, which probably Catherine has raised. Uh, to answer immediately, we uh, see in today's world, we can't have a single solution meant for everyone. It's a customized solutions, probably for a different age bracket, different type of customers. I, I will cover in my coming slides, uh, but let me just start with about what is customer experience. Everyone has a different definition of customer experience. But if I say, so customer, for me, customer experience is what? Customer experience is an abstract noun. It's, it's a feeling. It's a feeling of happiness, joy, anger. It's a moment of truth. And it will not come with a one transaction or two transactions. While I'm going to buy some, some, something, purchase something, I'm going to the website, I'm going to the showroom, every touch point will generate that experience. That's what we say. It's a sum total experience of every touch point. Customers 
journey with the brand which will define a holistically holistic customer experience for the customer end customer whether it's a website whether it's an app or uh, it's while talking to the agent so every touch point is critical to define a good customer experience uh while we say uh, there was a time or probably we say that customer experience is key to business but uh, i i strongly believe uh, that it has changed now it's not key to business rather customer experience is the business today it's no different from a sales or a marketing or any other division customer experience is as important if you see in the 1980s companies were focused on defect elimination and then moving to cost optimization and then in 20s it comes a decade where we were talking about creating value value creation but now in the current era the customer experience has become the business where everything start and end with the customer perception perception including obviously the quality of the product uh, how good is your store cleanliness how easy your uh, uh, website is to navigate how easy it is to do transactions on your on your application so all these uh, things create a good perception and make likely customers to come back and tell or their friends about your company and create a long term value so as i right said previously that okay it's multiple touch points which create your customer experience and with that experience it creates a perception with that perception will only define that customer will come back recommend you or not recommend you that's how it becomes a not key to business but that's all it's business and it's a fast fast forward world today if you see honestly competing on customer experience is the new battle ground altogether customers are once again are welcome to the strategic seat at the boat table uh, but companies are faced with a different environment today since customers can easily access any or any information about your product about your services or about your company on tips in seconds the challenge is uh, the companies uh, the new companies the niche players or the existing companies focused on customers can quickly emerge and disrupt industries bhavani it's it's guys it's very critical the companies which are new existing they are customer focused then quickly emerge and disrupt industries because competitive advantage is no longer guaranteed through your pricing or product strategies you have same product multiple companies what is a differentiator today the difference is the experience how we how good we as kalpana said it's very important to listen to engage with our customers if we don't listen them if we don't engage with them obviously if we don't listen we will not likely to engage and we will not able to build the right perception right perception we will not able to make our right strategies for customer and coming new coming days any company comes in with the right focus approach trust me think things will things will change Uh, very fast and uh, since it is so important uh, i would like to share this case study also where uh, gartner has done it uh, with the top leaders where they will be in next 18 months what is the their priority of investments they will be putting their money into if you see customer experience top the rank for investments so 30% of the marketing budget not the customer experience budget so marketing saying that i will putting my 30% of my budget into customer experience why because what they communicate what they brand ultimately it has to resonate on the grounds they say easy to buy is it really easy to buy they have to invest on website they say on grounds team sales so the tail showrooms people have to be educated enough it's it's very critical that's how the importance of this customer experience as a division so and it's not the 
only responsibility of a frontline uh, customer executive at the call center or the customer service team, but it's the responsibility of the holistically complete organization, whether it's sales, operations, marketing, everyone. Now, to reach that level, what, what we have to do, I'm talking about some, uh, some really uh, practical steps, what we as an organization do and what, with what every organization should do is, first of all, we, do we really know who our customer is? It is very critical step in customer experience, basically, it is a very critical step, which rely uh, reliable, realistic representation of the key audience segments for the for the brands or companies reference their representation based on some researches or probably speaking to the customer or web analytics. But uh, this will define this what this will do, uh, persona, is recommend right solutions, building right strategies for the right customers. If my customer is probably uh, there are uh, 30s uh, bracket of 25 to 30, bringing uh, probably a voice channel may be not important for them. They, they, they treat, they think differently. The people who use Netflix, so for example, Netflix is one of the example, they, they understand their customer so well, so what time, what content I am using, uh, basis that uh, they, will, they will show me the content that ensure my stickiness to that application to the brand, my loyalty. That is what my experience is. And this is a really great step for organizations to suit uh, the requirement of any of the customer. And it's not only to give experience, honestly, it's uh, this persona will help even to generate more revenue. We have ourselves have experience. We are servicing probably one of the fortune global uh, 500 company. Uh, they are uh, probably best of the electronics devices. Where basis the uh, customer profiling, we are able to upsell, cross-sell, and we have generated some $30 million of revenue in a year. Nothing, no sign, the only science is to know the customer, what is the age group, what is the liking, accordingly pitching him the relevant device with the re relevant application, relevant use cases. That's it. That's it is so important for any organization to understand their customer and build. So there was a time when we used to, to build product and then we go to the customer and sell. Obviously it has been reversed. Now we understand what customer wants, what are their challenges, what are their frustrations? And then we build, uh, they build our product and build our strategies and go to the market. That era has changed. So that's the importance of uh, knowing our customer. Hey, and, Rachit, uh, there's yeah. a question I have in mind. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you, you're talking about building personas. And of course, uh, you know, technology plays a, a very large role. We're talking about uh, not the regular um, technology. We're talking about AI, ML um, patterns here. What I see, you know, how do I build that predictability and create large scalable sets of, uh, you know, customized uh, buyer personas? Uh, through which I can create a better customer experience. Now, uh, my question to you is, Rachit, uh, you know, there are many AI models which were built upon the previous behavior, which was pre-COVID, right? Uh, but they were, of course, designed to respond to many changes. Uh, they are breaking today because of the unpredictable, massive shifts in the behavior. Now, uh, for example, you know, people searching and uh, people are searching and buying disinfectants, my wipes, masks, hand sanitizers. They, they don't really jive at this point of time uh, with the existing consumer spending models or behavior. So uh, in, in times like these, how do you account for that as a service provider of customer experience? How do you make that shift and how do you, how do you bring that angle into the buyer persona and how do you actually prepare for something as uh, unexpected as that? Excellent. Yes, Bhavani, times are changing. That's why it is very important to listen to our customers. What, what are they seeing? What are they feeling? And with this personas, it's, it's important how it helps us, what time we have to even call our customers. So for example, here is an is a, is a example where she's a homemaker, but she's working. What is the right time if I have to make a sales call? What is the right time to call? And if I have to call, what I have to sell? Sell is to, uh, sell is to this lady. So she has 
two children. So obviously, she will be emotional and worried about the health of his family and her children's. So I can I can correlate my proposition basis the profile and do do take the right step rather than pitching everything or calling her any time and making making more frustrated. Doesn't make sense. Makes sense. So yeah. That's that's the right strategy of yeah. Uh, yeah. of using this personas. So obviously there there's not a single answer, there's a single way. There are multiple ways to look at it. Yeah. But uh, you see, you do, and then you do the right thing by understanding. So personas is nothing, uh, Bhavani, but it's a, it's like a relationship. Uh, the more you understand your customer, the better the relationship and the better the experiences. It's a relationship. Got it. What I understand. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I'll move for, to another. Uh, it's it's consistently uh, the question which Catherine has raised. Yeah, I, I was going to say right. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So channels for different segmentation. See, as I told you, we can't treat every customer. Every customer has a different age segment, different behavior. If you see, obviously, the baby boomers to Generation X, millennials, and Generation Z. If you see Generation Z, uh, how we treat Generation Z, they are they are very less patient. They are they are very easy to voice out their opinions or bad experience on social media very fast. What do they want? How we service them? We can't service them that okay, they call at the call center, they have a waiting time have to wait for four seconds or five seconds or 15 seconds, they will be gone. They will only go to the Twitter and write, this is what I experienced. So for them, what, what, what you need to do design? For them, there is a, has to be a channel, which is instant. Maybe technology can help. So they want a transactional kind of information. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to play, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, talk on behalf of Catherine here. Yeah. Uh, so her question was more on terms of how do I motivate someone uh, to use the self-service channels more. Now, I understand that, you know, probably with a certain persona of buyers, <laughs> we cannot move them. <clears throat> they like to, I'll, they like to talk to a rep. Well, uh, so I, I get your point there as well. That, yes. uh, and, and that is why these personas are so important to create so that you understand which category of customers we are talking about. But let's say there's a small sub-segment. Yeah. Uh, and, and since you are in this business, Rachit, you always talk to your clients and prospects about how do I reduce the load on your um, agents, on your call centers to create and by creating a self-service portal? Now, my question to you and rather Catherine's question to you is how this is achieved, even if a small sub-segment of the customers who are likely, say millennials, right? Can I move 10% of the millennials to a self-service portal? And if yes, how, what are the strategies that work out there? Fair. So I, I'll tell you, millennials or probably uh, I'll say Generation X or uh, I'll tell you a real example. We are working with the with the probably one of the India's largest bank. Uh, we have to. So they have set of customers. Uh, and th in this age, what happens? So they have a fear of using mobile apps. Being a banking customer, obviously, there is a fear. And then there is a cumbersome process of finding, going to the Play Store, finding app, you put one name, you will find 10 apps in the one name, which is the right mm -hmm. app. Then, uh, then obviously, then uh, putting username, then OTPs. It's a cumbersome process, if you understand, for a certain age. I'm not talking about millennials. They, they, you need not to teach them. But, uh, but uh, yes, uh, for the certain age, who goes through this, this transition? So what the bank has done, so specific channel, so digital adoption channel has been created. And this process we have been running for almost a decade now, where we have, uh, so these customers have been converted from a, from a traditional conventional channel of going to branches to converting them to the application. And you won't believe uh, the success metrics is, uh, in past when they were, there was no application, they were doing one transaction in a month that has been changed to six transactions in a month. You can calculate the revenue and the cost per transaction is hence to cost saving. What we have done, we have just to cover their fear, somebody has to speak to them. Human angle has to be there. Machines can't do here. You have to call them, make them understand how this will change their life, how, it, how this will uh, may make their life more easier. Just by doing this, 
the behavior, their behavior, giving them initial comfort, helping them to do it, the behavior changes. I understand you will believe that, okay, calling all the customers, is it the right way? Yes, it is the right way. I will cover why it is important to engage uh, the customer and by calling is important. It is not only help you to engage, uh, it, it is uh, with this also, you can also create, do the profiling of the customer and throw that data back to the system to have a better engagement with the same customer. Whether it's millennial, GZ, whosoever, if millennials like to speak to the bot, it's okay, promote them bot, but at least you capture the profiling and then do it. Send them articles, send them right content to use them, to engage with them. And how the engagement will happen, I will cover probably the next slide, which will come. I am sure that will make uh, things more clear why I am focusing on personas or engagements or why are we doing this. Sure. Uh, another important uh, step for a customer journey is actually to create a journey for any organization, for any brand. It's the tool. Right. What activity? Uh, Rashid, Rashid, before you explain this slide, I'll just speak on, on behalf of uh, all the participants here. Um, the, the font is not readable. Uh, so you'll have to just help us understand what this slide is all about. Yes, sure, Bhavani. The font is internally. Uh, so we intend to share the format with, the, uh, with all the people. So okay. I, will, I, I will explain. Uh, so while defining a user journey, the immediate challenge is to structure the organization and the product rollout, as well as figuring out from where to start and how to start. So applying obviously sophisticated measurement to what customers are saying and empowering them. So having, it's, it's again a correlation to the persona, having clear persona is helpful in reminding you to direct aspect of your customer journey, how you map it. So today, if uh, what, what are the stages, right? I am one customer activities, I want to buy something. So I will get information through social media. I have to go to uh, through either friends or family, social media, go to the website. Though I have not decided, uh, there are various touch points. My curiosity levels are very high, but on the same time, the challenge is a lot of, if you see the pain points, there are a lot of uh, fraudulent sites are there. Then there's a research I will go. Uh, so awareness has to be created in the right way. So I have to ensure that I am available on the, all the social media channels. My website has the right information, everything. So then the stage comes with the consideration. So for the consideration, obviously I will, I will review other webs. I will, I will review Google reviews. I will see what, what other people are saying. Again, my excitement level, I'm very excited about the product. Uh, I will see what is the credibility of the organization brand, whether I will get service or not service. How do I, uh, they, how do I mention or probably show it to the customer that, okay, yes, we are the right brand. I'm available. I'm, res I'm responsive, a customer will send me the email or, uh, or call me uh, in all touch points I'm available, I'm giving the right information. Then I come at a decision-making point where the customer will ask for more, conf more information, uh, probably very specific, probably technical information in B2B cases and B2C cases also technical information, uh, car, what is the mileage and blah, blah, blah. But uh, so my, is my front-end sales, my contact center team, my sales teams are equipped with that knowledge enough to ensure that customer has delivered the right information. My website, my application uh, is, uh, have enough right information available, uh, which clear all the doubts and make the customer still excited and make a right decision. Then comes the onboarding. This is very critical piece onboarding. When I buy a product, I will tell you my personal example. I bought a probably, uh, dishwasher from one of the top best brand. Me and my family were fully excited. Our experience was fantastic while buying. We compared all the information. Uh, obviously this Corona times, nobody wants to work. Uh, so using uh, the dishwasher, but when the, and it delivered on time, but now when the delivery happened, I have a commitment that, that it will get installed in two hours. But honestly, uh, two hours, it becomes four hours to six hours to one day. It doesn't happen. Whatever reasons, maybe the genuine reasons. I'm not 
blaming the brand or something uh, due to corona there were restrictions and all but onboarding didn't happen that has if you see my experience from a uh, three four star five star it dropped down to zero just one thing onboarding the brand said it will get installed in two hours what happened in six hours though eight hours it was working perfectly fine they teach me they taught me operate but that experience dropped so now if i have to rate what will i rate how will i perceive how will i recommend how will i educate things get changed so importance is each each uh, division uh, each touch point is very critical to deliver the right experience everyone is responsible for marketing to sales to operation sorry i'm repeating this but yes it is important it's not the job or a role of a customer service team or experience team or a call center agent to deliver experience that right, yeah, there's a very interesting question on that note so uh, yeah. somia has asked this and uh, and uh, i think uh, not just somia but a lot of us are battling uh, across the board with this question that uh, you know one uh, there's there's a general consensus that these are extraordinary times uh, show compassion to your customers you've been talking mm -hmm. about that you know reach out to them listen to them uh, however uh, we all understand that we have to be empathetic about it and that how genuinely we care for the customers uh, but what is the right way to reach out to them uh, and uh, you know uh, does it will it show that you know how do i how do i come across as that you know i'm empathetic and i'm reaching out to help you rather than coming across um, seemingly desperate um, for for a touch point to make my sale uh, the, it's a it's 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 a very uh, interesting thin dividing line and i'm sure i mean you me everybody has battled with this question in the last few months so what's your take what's your experience what have you seen what works first i'll say thank you so much for asking this question you have yeah. my again i i'll share my experience what empathy really means and what is for the brand and for the companies i have ordered a pizza from a company my son was asking i want a margarita pizza that desperately i ordered it mm, it delivered uh, pretty on time it was fantastic journey order came within within uh, 20 minutes i received the order but uh, when i received it obviously it was not in a good shape and my son completely refuses uh, i will not i he told me that i will not eat this there there's a spill uh, because actually one slice of one slice of the pizza was like this and uh, somehow he is finicky is not as good as his father flexible but he was very particular that no 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 i want a complete round dough shape only i will not he is 6 years old uh, i did nothing uh, i raised uh, i have not spoken i have raised it to spillage uh, that's it nothing else though i tried to convince in between my son but you won't believe uh, i received another set of pizza in 15 minutes i just wrote on the app my son was excited for this pizza but this has happened now he's not eating that's it i never expected any refund to happen on the, i never expected uh, the pizza to come to me but as a brand what they assume how they how they listen how they react that was the moment of truth true and trust me yeah uh, i think kalpana has to say something yeah kalpana I please wanted please to, yeah i just wanted to um, add uh, the one point about uh, you know the question that you raised rachit that's a great example but i think what is very important in these times is to be authentic to the brand bhavani we can't appear egregious you know we can't appear uh, to be um, overreaching so understand what the brand stands for and be true to the brand if your call is to reassure the customer and just ask sir how are you doing in these covid times stop the conversation there when he is answered that don't try peddling another product right i mean then Great we answer. are completely that vitiating yeah. vitiating uh, you know uh, the objective of that call so be authentic now you can't be a pizza brand and talk about the a pizza brand talking about cleanliness makes sense but if you are a tv brand and you are talking about cleanliness doesn't make sense 
right? So you've got to be authentic to what the brand stands for. So, you know, uh, uh, so delivering the message, which is thought through during these times and not doing it for the sake of doing it, the minute we are thoughtful about it and authenticated, uh, authentic in our approach, we will be able to come up with, uh, you know, the right messaging, the right tonality of the messaging, the right content of messaging and the right delivery methods as well. Sorry. Thank you. Was, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for contributing. So, Rachit, uh, Thanks, not sir. to alarm you again. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At 12, so, yeah. Uh, so, let, let, let me move to other slide. I'll not take much time. Yes, uh, tech is important. I will not say tech is not everything, but tech is very important. And these days, we have a lot of good tools and technology available where it helps us uh, to build efficiency into the system. While uh, rather you are listening to the customers, speech analytics tool, video base, it is, it is critical to the business. But it can't take away your uh, obviously human element out of it because that's what the customers, most of the customers wanted. But tech will only build, uh, tech will help you to build efficiency in the system and bring your cost to serve may come down. And How is the right balance achieved? I mean, a lot has talked about, uh, you know, data that mm -hmm. helps you uh, service at scale. Um, and, and we also talk about uh, the human element uh, yes. in customer experience. So, so Rachid, how do you balance? How do you, how do you go about doing that? Um, any, any examples from your real life you can so, pluck out and... Uh, is, uh, uh, AI is being used as a quicker alternative to handle monotonous tasks, so, such as data collection. So for example, if I have to know my balance, I, I can't wait, it's, it's a monotonous job. I have to write my number and tell me the balance. Now I need, I need to speak to somebody else. Collection of data, compiling data, interaction, feedback. Uh, but the human representation is still required to interpret the data, analyze and, and then predict behavior and then build strategy around it. In fact, I see some of your points here. Uh, I think speech analytics uh, yes. and uh, the video-based support is, is a good blend of uh, tech and human intervention there. Speech analytics, where yeah. it helps. So obviously, listening to your customer voice, using right pitches, relevant, con telling re relevant content to your customer, rather than using a five-minute pitches to two-minute pitches, this is what you wanted, this is what the need of the hour. Move ahead. It's a conversational AI. Like, as I told you, so if I have, there is one transaction if I have to do, basic data collection is important. A bot can do it. But then when I need recommendation or need actually solution, then human can come into the picture. Right. So today, a lot of bots are also doing it. Uh, basic data collection can be done by the bot, basic transaction, and then it shifted the chatbot, the chat shifted to the human. So it's, it's basically blend of, I'll say, human EQ and machine IQ. That, that will define the future of CX. That, that in, your is a experience, uh, in your experience, have you ever seen chatbots work? Like, uh, my, my personal experience is, uh, if I'm on a website and there is a bot that appears, I know it's a bot. I know. I agree. And, 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 and even if I have to, hey, and, it, and they personalize the whole message for me that, you know, Bhavani, um, how can I help you today? I see you're here. Uh, but I know it's a bot. Yes. And I, and I just feel very weird talking to a bot. But but uh, does it really work in business? Uh, have you seen any productivity improvement? Have you seen customer experience going up? Have you seen your NPSC SAT scores going up because of it? What is the real trend today? Does it does it help? Does it not help? Or does it just slow down the website? I'm afraid, Bhwani, uh, it's a great question, but uh, uh, I don't have a very straight answer to it. Uh, it, it requires a discussion. Sure. Uh, but uh, to uh, I'll tell you, uh, honestly, if you see West, bots have not been that successful. Not mm. have been successful. Mm. But in India, we have very good case studies also where uh, bots with human have done a brilliant job. So the jury is still out on that. So we, uh, we jury, get, yeah. jury is still out, but as a as my personal experience, they have done a, they have done a decent uh, job. So technology it has bring brought efficiency, and even uh, for a customer base like millennials, they want. They are uh, they are less emotional. They are pretty transactional. Okay, I want to do this. Do 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 do. Period. But I may uh, if you see me, uh, 
not generation z but i may want to understand it kaise hoga kya karoge whether it will happen or not how will you do it i'll be skeptical about it even for the renewal if i have to today renew my insurance i need to speak to somebody to give me comfort okay this is done is it done though i've got a mail okay have i got the message yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's it's a human psyche different behavior for different customers yeah. sure but yes uh, i'll not say that uh, that's the future but it's blend only right. tech right. no only ai but it was the fag end of the time now yeah. um so I, um, i'm almost done i am at my last slide and this is a pretty right. interesting one okay uh though i don't have the right answers to it maybe but this is a important metric uh in coming to time today or coming time uh, bhavani uh ltv is what basically it's a long time customer lifetime value we we can't judge or we can't make our strategies by considering customers as a one time transaction no we have to see a lifetime value of the customer accordingly we have to invest in our strategy in our product in our verticals in our customer experience everything accordingly if you see apple so probably one of the brand, apple so their a uh, customer lifetime value the product is of 300 or 350 dollars but the lifetime value of that customer is 2500 dollars the same customer in us this is particular us case where he buys the iphone then he buys the ipad then for multiple products and they see it as a lifetime value that's how they invest so today apple doesn't we say that apple don't services the phone you come and you get a replacement immediately that's what the experience is that's what they want to show that don't worry you buy it we are there to take care of you they engage there are brands who engage with you i will i'll give you a very uh, basically ltv is a prediction of your net profit attributed to the entire future relationship of with that customer so whether like an uh, insurance banking insurance so i got a insurance from two companies hmm. but my engagement with one brand is pretty high hmm. and next time if i have to my son or my wife or i have to do term or other products hmm. i will go to the brand who is more engaging with me engaging with me because that defines the experience who understand my persona that defines the experience i will stick and over the period of uh, let's say 3 to 5 years my premium has gone up from a uh, from a probably 100 rupees to 1000 rupees there is a jump of 10x that's the lifetime value of a customer that has to be understand that is a very important metric today see we have a metric called cset we have a metric called uh, and uh, npas yes. they are very important metric but all these metrics do what they will reach you take you to journey to ltv LV. or clv lifetime LV. value of the customer yes i'll give you a very layman example very layman example i was talking to my wife while i was building this like we were working on this slide she said a jeweler is the best example that that jeweler your jeweler knows who you are what you like what you are Uh, he engages with you pretty much he knows your family function is coming what you like uh, what is your budget uh, he there's a he has built a trust over the period of time and you see uh, any jeweler is is go for generations there are jewelers who go for generations with the right persona with the right journey with the right engagement that's the kind of uh, ltv they have built today that's right. with the banking that's with the insurance it's a trust what you build it's a experience what you give you go out of the way you know when i'm walking to the showroom of any jeweler he may offer me a black tea because ke sir black tea peete hain nothing else it's a small gestures which makes a big difference today True. so i rest my case here uh, uh, thank you this was uh, this was uh, this was brilliant uh, thank you so much uh, Uh, apologies to everyone who had uh, any commitments we ran a little over time but i hope we uh, made it worth your time here uh, uh, any questions before we wrap this up today okay all right um, so rachit uh, kalpna thank you so much it was such a pleasure to have you both uh, and a huge thank you to everybody who joined in here asked questions made it interesting 
uh, we'll be back with some more interesting uh, masterclasses and uh, Rachit Kalpana in case there are any questions that I cannot answer I'll probably reach out to you uh, and uh, uh, give them back to my participants so thank you so much have a lovely day ahead and uh, thank you for doing this today was a pleasure was a pleasure Bhavani thank you so much thank you so thanks much everyone. Bye, yeah. thank bye you. everyone bye everyone have a good day guys bye bye